This video is a demonstration on how to wire in your ESC1602 to the new ES Classic board. You're going to need limit switches uh, on your ESC1602, so if you don't already have limit switches, you're going to have to purchase them. This video is geared towards people that already have limit switches and have unwired their wires from their original board and are trying to do the conversion from scratch while understanding what the terminals are on the limit switch and what terminals they coordinate with on the control board. Let's start at the limit switches. You're going to notice there's two limit switches. Now, there is no indication whether the top limit switch is the open limit switch or the closed limit switch and whether the bottom one is the open or closed. What indicates if it's open or closed is if you manually release the gate operator and move the gate to the open position. As you move it to the open position, this cam is going to turn and so is the bottom cam. When it reaches the open position, one of the two cams should be pushing in on a lever on a limit switch. So now you know your gate is in the open position, the cam is turned, in my example, the top limit switch is being pushed in. That is the only way to know which limit switch is the open limit. So this one, on my demonstration, the top limit switch is going to be the open limit switch. Therefore, the bottom will be the closed limit switch. Now that we have that solved, now we can go on to identifying your common and your normally closed terminal on your limit switch. We get questions about, oh, well, which wire color? Because it comes with a black and a white. Well, as you can see, wire colors are not a reliable way to tell anything. I can put a black one here and a white one there. I can swap them. Doesn't really matter. It didn't change which one's my common and which one's my normally closed. The, the white and the black are just colors. There's still wires inside. So ignore the idea of X wire color means this, Y wire color means that. Uh, look on the limit switch itself. This prong right here is your common, the one on the side that's by itself. Then you're going to see two prongs over here. Imprinted on here, you're going to see an NC and an NO. You should not be using the NO. That's very important. NO stands for normally open. It is not used. So just remember, no means no. <laughs> NC is the one to use. That's your normally closed. Now the limit switches may have changed over years, they've used a couple different suppliers. On this example, it's the two outside ones. Don't trust it on being the two outside ones. Actually read the diagram on here and see. If, look for the NO and the NC. So now on the motor side, we've identified which limit switch is your open limit switch, which limit switch is your closed position limit switch, which wires are our common, and which wires are normally closed. Now you want to see what wires these are paired to because most of the time the wires that come with this go to longer wires that go back to the control board. What you're usually going to find is the two wires from the common are typically joined together to one wire because on both the old board and on the new board they went to the same terminal. So on this scenario I purposely mixed up the wire colors because, again, wire colors do not matter. Ignore wire colors. So we have the common from the open switch, the common from the closed switch, and most likely these lead to a single wire that goes back to the control board. Identify this wire that is your common, and I'm going to show you where to put this on the control board now. This limit switch block pulls off, and then you can see some writing underneath here. Notice it says limit 1. The one next to it says limit 2. Limit 1 is for the operator that you designate as motor 1. There's motor 1 and limit 1. So we're wiring the limits for, mo for motor 1 and limit 1. Now in even smaller writing here you'll see OL1, COM1, and CL1. COM1 is where your two commons from your limit switch are going to go to. So in your terminal block you're going to wire either the two wires from the COM or the two wires that were connected to a single wire leading back to this terminal, the center terminal on the block. Then from your open limit switch which you identified 
earlier out on the operator arm, you're going to take the wire that leads from the normally closed on the open limit switch and go to OL1. Then from the closed limit switch, you're going to take the normally closed wire from the closed limit switch and bring it back to CL1. Then of course, the two motor leads from that operator, you want to go to motor 1. You're going to repeat the same procedure for motor 2 and limit 2. Once you have it wired up and you've double checked that you have the normally closed use on the limit switches, that you have the commons together in the center terminals, and that you have the open limit switch identified and the closed limit switch identified and the normally closed from those particular limit switches going to the correct terminals here, then you can make sure that the operator is running in the correct direction. You want to move the operator halfway, re-engage the operator from the manual release position, and press the center button. The display should show OP and it should start going open. If it shows OP yet the gate starts going closed, go ahead and press the center button to stop it. Then you will take the wires that are in L1-1 and L1-2 and swap those two wires with each other. Then you're going to do the same thing to the slave if the slave started moving closed as well. So let's say you have a dual, you press that center button, it says OP on the display, which stands for open by the way, and they both start going closed. Both on the L1-1, L1-2, those two will be swapped, and also the L2-1, L2-2, those will be swapped. If one starts going open and the other starts going closed, you only change the one that's going the wrong direction. When doing this, you don't have to change anything on the limit switch blocks. The limit switch blocks are set up correctly per the limit for the open and closed position. It has nothing to do with what direction the motor is moving in. So only change these if that, if that occurs. Once you have them changed and the display is showing OP and the gate is going open when it shows OP, we're all set as far as wiring the operator arms.